Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, home of all things stock, investment, and personal finance related. Now for today's video, we've got a really exciting clinical stage biotech company for you. The name is Celsi Corporation. There's a lot going on with this company in terms of near-term catalysts. They just came out with their 2023 financial overview along with an update to the investment community. So I wanted to talk about that in today's presentation. But before we do, please take a second, hit the like button, you guys. It's a big help to myself and the channel. If you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to join. This video actually came to me in the form of a subscriber request. So we'd love to have you as part of the community. And in addition to that, leave a comment in the section below, specifically if you're already holding shares of Celsi. Let me know what you think about this company, last year's results, and your outlook for 2024. And with that being said, let's get into today's video. Okay guys, so that's right. Today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at Celsi Corporation trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol CVM, as you can see here. Now this is as of midday Thursday, January 18th. The company is down about six cents or two and a half percent on the session. However, if we zoom out to a six month chart, you can really see that Celsi has been on a great run since the end of October, November kind of time frame. They're in the dollar 16 range. You can see October 20th, the dollar seven. And then really in the month of November, you can see some aggressive growth all the way up to a nice peak at 288 and a local high of 307 on December 26. Now we have seen a little bit of a retreat, maybe presenting a buying opportunity for this clinical stage biotech company if you're looking for exposure to this sector. Now we've got a lot to go through in today's presentation. You can see about a month ago, they came out with their 2023 financial results and their clinical and corporate developments, which we're gonna talk about. But before we do, I quickly wanted to jump over to the corporate website. I'll leave this linked in the video description below and give you guys an under the hood look at what CellSci is all about. So you can see their tagline is empowering immune defenses dedicated to research and development directed at improving the treatment of cancer, autoimmune and infectious diseases. Now what's interesting about CellSci is they're progressing nicely along the drug development pipeline. They've got manufacturing capabilities in place and as we're gonna see throughout today's presentation, very impressive clinical results. Now if I jump over to the business strategy section, this gives you a better understanding of how this company is set up. You can see cell size vision is to change the way cancer is treated, striving to develop a novel immune-based therapy with the potential to utilize the body's own immune defense system against the disease with the possibility of minimal toxicity to normal cells and organ systems. So we've talked about this concept in prior biotech videos, you guys. Obviously cancer is one of the most impactful conditions or diseases around that really don't have a lot of effective treatments at this point in time. Now their lead investigational therapy is known as multikine, which is a leukocyte interleukin injection. It's currently being developed as a potential therapeutic agent directed at enabling the immune system within these patients to use the body's own anti-tumor immune response. And multikine is being developed as a first line therapy for cancer, which means it's being studied for use before a patient actually receives any other therapy for their advanced primary head and neck cancers. And you can see a little bit further down the page, the three core beliefs of CellSci, including the fact that their phase three data suggests that they may have found a way to create a safe, non-toxic cancer drug. And you can see here, based on the results of that phase three clinical trial, they plan to apply for FDA approval for multikine use in the treatment of patients who receive multi-kind treatment regime to be followed either by surgery or radiation treatment. And in terms of size, you can see on a global scale about 210,000 patients per year who could benefit from this therapeutic regime. So now that we have a better understanding of what cell size is all about, some of their core or foundational beliefs, I wanted to jump into the investor presentation. This has been updated November 24th, so fairly recently, and give you guys a little bit more context before we jump into that fiscal 2023 review. So as we just saw on the corporate website, they're creating the first pre-surgical cancer treatment for both head and neck cancer, then expanding or bringing that therapy to other forms of cancer down the road. 
Multikine is an immune boosting drug which is administered right after diagnosis before surgery or other treatments have actually gone in there and damaged the immune system. So for anyone who's had family members or unfortunately yourself struggled with cancer, you understand that a lot of times the toxicity, the radiation, that's actually what leads to the demise of these patients. So the fact that Multikine can be used before any of those other steps is a major game changer here. It's administered when the immune system is the strongest before any of those other steps. And as you can see, there have been no systemic toxicities or multikine related deaths reported in more than 700 human subjects. So very safe, again, based on the clinical data that they're seeing. Now, out of the 210,000 patients we saw on the corporate website, they've identified about 145,000 globally per year that have advanced primary head and neck cancer and a variety of other conditions that would make them great candidates for this procedure. And most importantly here, you can see the phase three results in that target population, showing that Multikine actually was able to cut the risk of death in half at the five year milestone versus the control group in that finalized target population. So when we talk about very strong clinical results to date, this is exactly what we mean. And then from there, various different pathways to approval and getting this treatment out to the general public who are ultimately gonna see the benefit. Now, as you continue to scroll through the presentation, you can see a better definition of what Multikine actually is. You can see some of the actual test results here, along with the safety profile, which again, to date has no Multikine related deaths and very minimal adverse effects that they were able to resolve after surgery and were kept local in terms of their impact. Now the next slide I wanted to spend a little bit of time on is talking about some of the pre-surgical responses that were observed in the phase three trial. So a pre-surgical response is defined as a significant change in the disease before surgery. And as a takeaway from the phase three trial, they really saw two different types of response. First, a major reduction in the size of the tumor itself, which is defined as a reduction in the size of the tumor by 30% or more prior to surgery. And the second takeaway or observation were these downstaging effects where the disease actually improved from stage four to stage three, which is known in the industry as pre-surgical downstaging. So both very beneficial observations from this test patient group. And as a result, that's exactly why CellSci is making the statement based on this data that Multikine leads to a better overall survival rate, as you can see with the risk of death being cut in half at that pivotal five-year milestone. Not to mention a number of other benefits, which include tumor size reduction, downstaging, and a 28% jump in five-year absolute survival. Now, as a result, CellSci is planning to seek immediate approval which in my opinion is why we've seen so much activity with the share price recently. And I also wanted to throw in a look at this state-of-the-art manufacturing facility. I alluded to this in the intro here, you guys, but this is a purpose-built facility for Multikine. It's state-of-the-art over 73,000 square feet, including manufacturing and research and development space. With over $200 million already invested in this drug manufacturing facility and an initial capacity of over 12,000 or more treatments per year. And this is a look from a revenue standpoint based on the company's current approximate market cap, the fact that they can produce 12,000 treatments per year at approximately $150,000 per treatment is exactly why you can see people are so excited about the numbers for a lot of these cancer solving or cancer focused companies. Now why I thought it was so timely to get this video out is number one, due to those value inflection points that we've talked about in other biotech videos. But secondly was that 2023 report that just came out mid December there. And following that on January 8th, we actually got an article from Zach Small Cap Research on CVM talking about 2023 as a whole. So I wanted to actually walk through this report and talk about some of the highlights now that we have a better understanding of what CellSci Corporation is all about. So obviously a very busy year for the company with many scientific presentations, talking about the survival benefit of Multikine, which we just explored. They had efforts to advance their biologics license application or BLA in multiple jurisdictions, meetings with Health Canada, a vote of confidence from UK's NICE Commission, 
and ongoing conversations with the FDA. So pushing forward to get this approval as we just saw in the investor presentation. And as a result, management has now outlined the steps that will follow for multi-kind registration in these various different regulatory territories with submissions and requests for consultation already submitted for four of the primary regulatory agencies, including Health Canada, the FDA in the United States, European Medicines Agency, and the MHRA in the UK. So a number of catalysts still on the horizon moving into 2024. Now they didn't recognize revenue for 2023. Again, this is a clinical stage company. They incurred total operating expenses of approximately $31.5 million for a net loss of 73 cents per share. However, they were able to keep expenses under control with research and development dropping 11% year over year, which was partially driven by lower employee stock compensation and clinical trial costs. Their G&A expenses declined as well by 16%, coming in at $9 million for the year. And as of September 30th, the company had cash and cash equivalents totaling about $4.1 million, which was bolstered by the sale of approximately 2.5 million shares for net proceeds of 4.5 million after the quarter finished. And currently, or at least at the time this was put together, no debt on the sell side balance sheet. So definitely a very interesting company to take a look at. Very timely presentation here, you guys. And if you start to look at all the different factors that are lining up for CellSci, including the submission of that target population data to both the FDA and Health Canada in Q1 of 2024, I definitely think this may be one to keep an eye on. Now, I'd be super curious to hear your thoughts in the comment section below, specifically if you already hold shares of CellSci, and if not, your outlook or thoughts on this organization. If you're still watching the video, hopefully you found some value, so make sure you hit the like button. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, McNally Money, feel free to join. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.